All right, so uh, what we're doing this morning is we're, we're dropping the fuel tank on uh, Ethan's truck. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be pulling the fuel pump out so we can uh, take the fuel pump out and just run a drop tube down to the bottom of the fuel tank. And since it's uh, going to be converted over to diesel, um, we're basically going to be doing away with the fuel pump. Now, you probably could go ahead and use a fuel pump. If you probably, if you did that, you probably have to put a fuel pressure regulator up in the uh, on the firewall, probably somewhere to cut back on the fuel pressure. I think these run somewhere between 10 to 14 psi. Um, you probably only need, I don't know, maybe around 4 to 6 psi just to push diesel fuel up to the engine. So um, we went ahead and took out the the filler neck here. We've got this. Um, a lot of times, if you're going to do a regular fuel pump replacement, a lot of times you'll pull the bed and get the bed off, and then that way you don't have to drop the tank out the bottom. Um, most times just because you deal with a lot of rusted uh, bolts and um, hangers and such. But anyhow, what we did, we went ahead and we took the fuel filler neck off and uh, we disconnected the, uh, the electrical lines. We've got those disconnected. As you can see, we've real quick connects. Those come right off. Uh, this is going to be for your fuel sending unit and also your fuel pump. Um, this here is the filler neck and this is the... Uh, the vent line to the tank and then basically we're going to have a the specialty tools you are going to need these if you don't have a set of these these uh, will go inside the fuel line connections themselves and pop those lines off these are hard lines you can see these are rusted pretty bad what we're going to probably wind up doing is go ahead and cut these lines and we're going to put some new new rubber lines basically directly onto the the uh, the fuel uh, tank itself and then clamp them onto here and that way we don't have to worry about any uh, future problems. All right, so we got the fuel tank out. And this here got a little keeper. Looks like a great big old snap ring that goes around this fuel sending unit. I'll try to get that off the best you can. That's it. All right, so we've taken the snap ring off. It goes on the tank. Let's see if you get this thing out here. So it's going to be your fuel sending in and, and your fuel pump. You get it here, you just have to kind of turn it a little bit to clear your spray yourself with gas. Yeah, you know, that's basically what you got right there. There's your fuel sending in, it's what tells you what your fuel gauge is. And this is it. So, um, in there you've got a little, little O-ring that once you uh, put this back in there, you have to put a little uh, grease, uh, something on there to get that done. So, all righty. All right. So what we've done today, we went ahead, we've dropped the fuel tank. Uh, we've got that out. We went ahead and cut the exhaust completely out of the truck, and now we're making room for our motor mounts. So what we've got, we've got a NAPA number, it's a 642-2267, and it's a liquid-filled uh, motor mount. And uh, what we're doing now is we're making room for these to mount uh, on our uh, existing, in between the frame rails here on this truck. So what we've had to do is, in here we went ahead and we removed our... Um, existing motor mounts, the existing ones that was here. Uh, some guys do use the uh, stock Dodge mounts for this, but um, I, I've heard that there's a lot of vibration that comes off of this motor. Um, we are going to go ahead and put on a uh, vibration dampener, probably out of a 5.9 liter. But uh, what we've got to do is where these stock mounts were, we've went ahead and made a cut right here and uh, we're going to cut this off, and as you can see here, we're going to cut this off. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And, uh...
And the main reason why we cut those off is because once you turn this engine around, you lower it down in here, those little lips that, that come up here will actually hit, as you can see here, it kind of gets into the oil pan a little bit on both sides. So we went ahead and trimmed those off. Uh, and then we'll go in and grind that up and then uh, that should give us, a, we may have to trim this one back just a tad bit more, but we'll see where it lays and then uh, we'll see where it's at after that. So, uh, all right, so this is the fuel pump here. Um, we're getting ready to put it back in the fuel tank. Let me go over a couple things that we found out. Number one is these, some are metal and some are plastic. This is what's going to happen to you if you, it breaks it off and then you've got a little short stubby piece there. Now to compensate for that, I took my cutoff wheel and I cut this little section out right there. And what that's going to allow it to do is now we're going to be able to slide this hose on this right here and put a, uh, put a clamp on there. That way you can still reuse this. Um, so anyhow, that works good. If it helps anybody out, that'd be great. Um, a couple things I need to touch on. Number one is uh, we did take the fuel tank out and still lift in the bed from the bottom of the truck. What we found is number one, we had a fuel line that was basically rusted almost in two. I barely touched it and it just broke right there. Another thing is here's the brake line. It was toast. So if your fuel tank hasn't been out in a while, all of your, your fuel lines, all your brake lines, they all run up on, inside the frame rail. And for us, it's a good thing that we did drop the tank instead of just lifting the bed to put in the, um, the fuel pump. So what we did is we took out the electric fuel pump on it. And I showed you earlier, and uh, it's somewhere around here. We took the electric fuel pump out, and then you've got this flexible hose right here. From the top of the tank, here to the very bottom of the tank is 13 inches so this flexible hose is not long enough to reach all the way to the inside base inside there so what I did was I found a, a piece of nylon um, it's like plastic but it's, it's almost like a brake line uh, an air brake line uh, hose very tough very uh, durable and uh, gas and oil won't affect it what we did is I slid it up on the inside of the bottom of this hose and I just clamped it in place and before I clamped it I did put some epoxy up here around the hose so as I slid it up inside the hose I had a nice tight seal and then once I clamped it I didn't have to worry about any air leaks uh, once the fuel got a little low in the tank. Uh, the sending unit um, is here everything is working good there we did take out the, the fuel pump wire. This ran down inside and hooked onto the fuel pump. We just snipped them off at here at the, at the base right there. Um, and then when we go to put this back in, we're gonna put a little grease on this O-ring right here, kind of clean it up a little bit better. Put a little grease, put it back in place, put the, the metal snap ring, and we'll be ready to stick the fuel tank back up in there. We took this gas tank out a few days ago and we noticed that there was a lot of rust and there still is. We've been working on it for a little bit. But we're going to keep on scraping off all this big rust spots. And then after we get all that off, we're going to put some cover paint on there. That way, in the future, we won't really have to worry about any big rust spots forming and uh, causing some leaks. But after we do that, we're going to, once we get to put it in there, we're going to take some of this grease here. And we're going to lube up these rims right here. That way, it fits nice and tight and it, it slips in there really good. We don't have to even have any difficulties fitting it in there. And this is the uh, regular gas nozzle. And since we're putting a diesel in here, uh, a gas nozzle will not fit because the diesel nozzle is uh, bigger. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this whole saw and then we're gonna take this, we're gonna drill all that out in there, and then we're gonna uh, make it to where it will fit a diesel nozzle. That way, uh, where we, we go put gas in it, it'll fit the There you go. 
Got your cut open. So, Ethan. So, when you're working on something and you had a tool and it takes you how long to find it after you put it up? I don't know. A couple minutes. A couple minutes. My foot. Let's see. So, Ethan, I gave him a small task. You know, a 15 year old could do this. I mean, that's how old it is, right? Take an Allen head and loosen this up, right? And get what out? What are you supposed to get out of here? Out of here. Out, yeah, but what are, you, what are we trying to get out? A little nut in there. The, the drill bit, right? Uh, Come on, you got it. All right, so here on top of my toolbox, all nice and organized, right? <laughs> so he's looking for it for about 10, 15 minutes, can't find it. So then he happens to peer over and where's it at? Right here on the inside, right where it's supposed to be, right? Right there. So that way dads out there that's got kids, young teenagers that are wanting to use your tools, now you know why most of your tools disappear. Isn't that right? All right, so the other day, uh, went to the You Pull It salvage yard and picked up a Hydro Boost. Uh, we are gonna be switching over from a regular vacuum brake booster to a Hydro Boost. This uh, came with the, the reservoir the Hydro Boost and it appears to be almost a uh, brand new master cylinder. Now I got both of these units for $15 at a U pull it. Um, it also came with uh, the linkage that goes to the brake pedal. I did look at the GMC uh, Safari minivan. It has a Hydro Boost on it except right here where it mounts to the firewall this part right here angles down at about a 35 degree angle. So I didn't look at that. And also the uh, GMC Safari actually had a short uh, linkage as well. So I knew that didn't work. So um, this came out of a, I believe it's a 1996 um, G30 3500 passenger van. It had a, uh, a 350 engine in it and it had this Hydro Boost in there as well. It does appear to have the 4L80E transmission. I believe that's going to be my next item to pull. Um, if I pull that, I believe it they says $100 for that. So um, with that, it would be nice just to have around just in case for some reason this 4L60 doesn't hold up. I'll be able to swap out that 4L80. I'll just have to get a transfer case adapter. Um, this truck actually does have the 32 spline output shaft on the uh, transfer case. I'll, I won't know until I pull the transfer case whether or not it has the, the uh, 32 spline on the input, which most likely it probably doesn't. Um, I also did pick up a uh, double fan. Um, this is actually uh, same salvage yard. This came off of a 2000 Chevy Impala with the V6. Um, this is going to work perfectly. I have to make up some brackets um, to come down and hook on that. It is a dual fan. Um, this should be, and it's got a high and a low speed on these fans. I um, we'll went ahead and cut the wiring harness, that way I can have that. I'll have everything here for that. Um, I'll just have to hook up a relay and, um, and also a power to that relay. And then, then that will be actually hooked to the engine to the uh, temperature sensor. That way the fans will automatically kick on. And also, I'm going to hook up to the air conditioner compressor. That way when the AC compressor kicks on, the fans will come on and that will increase the cooling temperature, especially sitting in town and or traffic. So um, pick this up at the U-Pull-It for $25 for both of these uh, dual fans. This is the radiator out of the, the truck itself. Everything should go just fine with it. Um, I think it's going to work well. Um, so what we got done today was we went ahead and, and bolted up the trans engine to the transmission. We've got it sitting tight, and we've got it sitting in there, um, and somewhat level. We did go ahead and pull out the all the exhaust, all the way back to the very uh, back part of the exhaust where it turns into the three-inch exhaust. Everything from the engine, the catalytics, um, converters, and the big muffler has been cut out. So. Um, we did go ahead and reinstall the fuel tank, got that installed. Um, that is all hooked up, ready to go. And as you saw in the previous video, we've drilled out the inlet to the uh, fuel tank for the diesel nozzle. That way it'll fit. So, 
um, I guess the next project is going to be getting in there, checking everything, and then starting on the motor mounts. So thanks for watching.